As Rails applications become more complex, exceptions are bound to happen. You can see I have an application here with a big red button, and if I click on it, you can see we get an exception. I bet you didn't see that coming. Now when this happens in the production environment, the user won't see this fancy error message here, they'll just see a generic 500 error. And our goal as developers should be that the user never ever sees that page. But to have that happen, we need to be notified of whenever a user receives an exception error. Now there are a variety of ways to be notified of when an exception happens, but my current preferred method is using the exception notification gem. This is actually a classic plugin, but is currently well maintained by Sebastian Martinez. The way this works is that it will email you whenever an exception is raised in production. And it's really easy to set up too. It's just a piece of rack middleware that you can configure in one line in your environment config file. So to get this set up in my application, I'll just add the gem to my gem file called exception notification, and then make sure to run the bundle command to install it. And then we can configure the middleware in one of the environment config files. You can see if we go under config environments, we have each one for each environment. Now you would normally just add this to your production environment, but since we're just trying this out here, it's a good idea to first add it to your development to get it working first. And then at the bottom here, I can add a call to config middleware use, and then pass in the exception notifier class. And then there are various options you can pass in here as well. One of them being the sender address, and I'll just set that to no reply at railscast.com. And then the other option being the uh, exception recipients. And you, this can either be just a simple string or an array of multiple addresses. So here I'll say ryan at railscast.com. Now because this sends notifications over email, to test this we need to configure the action mailer delivery method. Now setting up a delivery method in development can be a bit of a pain. So here I'm actually going to use a gem I created to help out with this called letter opener. So back inside of my gem file, I will add this gem here called letter opener, and then only add it to the development environment because we don't really wanna use it anywhere else. And also make sure to run the bundle command to install that. And then inside of my development config file, I can set the delivery method to letter opener. Now what this will do is every time an email attempts to send, it will open it up in the browser for viewing instead of actually delivering it. So now let's try this out. I restarted my Rails application, and now when I click on this big red button here, you can see it opens up a separate window showing me the email message thanks to letter opener, and it contains the full information about the exception that was raised. So this is the email that we would normally get in production when a user hits an error. And notice it automatically prefixed it with error, and we got it from no reply and to Ryan at railscast.com. Looks like it's working great. Now there are various ways you can customize the exception notifier middleware. You can see some additional options you can pass in here, such as email prefix to change the subject line prefix of the email. And you can even change what the email contains by passing in a sections option. You can make your own sections and even add some additional data which are passed into there to customize it to fit your, the needs of your application. Now I usually leave these settings at their default, but it's nice to know that there is an option to customize it if you want to. Now there is one other option though that's not well documented here that I do like to customize, so let's take a look at the source code and see how it works. So I'll scroll up here, and then we can dive into the exception notifier class. And then you can see in here that there's uh, an option for ignoring exceptions. And you can see the defaults here, and those are normally exceptions that would return a 404 error to the user instead of a 500. Now it's nice to customize this if you find yourself getting an exception that you don't really want an email about, so you can pass an ignore exceptions option to customize which exceptions get ignored. So inside of our development config file, I can add an ignore exceptions option in here, and then I can just pass in the exception notifier default ignore exceptions, and then add to that whatever exceptions I want. In this case, just for demonstration, I will add the runtime error here, so I'll just paste that in and make sure to restart your server when you're changing the config file like this. And now you can see when I click that big red button here, it's not going to send me an email because it's ignoring that runtime error exception. Now you probably don't want to ignore runtime errors because those are usually important, but there were likely other exceptions that you do want to ignore that uh, may be triggered by bots or something that is really not that important that you may want to add here. 
Now once you get this all configured and set up the way you like it, move it on over to the production config file so that you get notified of errors in production. And you'll also need to set up the delivery method however you like so it sends emails in production. So that's how you set up the exception notification gem. Really easy to use and it does the job nicely. But there are other solutions if email is not your forte. One option is the whoops gem by Daniel Higginbottom. What this does is it stores the notifications in a Mongo database and then it presents them in a nice user interface which is actually a Rails engine. So take a look at the demo and if it's something that you like, give it a try. Another option is Airbrake, which is formerly known as Hoptoad. This is a paid solution, but it offers some neat features such as GitHub integration. So if that interests you, check it out. And finally, if these options don't suit your needs, you may want to just create one yourself by just making a mountable engine. I show you exactly how to do this in episode 277, and it's really not that hard. You just log the exceptions into a database and then provide a little admin interface for displaying them. Well, that's it for this episode on being notified when an exception happens in your application. I hope you enjoyed it.